Do you want insider real estate investing training videos for free? Throughout this video, click the challenge button to subscribe to my free 30-day video series, How I Close Nearly a Deal a Day. So, well, thank you everybody for listening today. Uh, we've got a great guest on today. Uh, his name is Peter Vexelman, and he is a real estate investor and coach. Peter, how are you? Doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, you bet. It's it's a privilege to have you on here. So um, why don't you go ahead and tell us the two-minute elevator pitch about your business? Sure. Well, I am, a, as you mentioned, a real estate investor. i um, been doing it for 15 plus years. I've now bought over 3,000 properties. I have operation here in Atlanta, Georgia. I also have an office in Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, two in California and one in Wisconsin. Wow. Uh, so doing things all over the nation. Um, the, the real key to my model, what makes it so unique and what, what makes it so uh, in such a growth mode right now is that I've successfully combined. We've successfully combined a traditional real estate investment company with a traditional real estate brokerage. And so when we go to the market, we basically let the sellers, consumers decide uh, which options to take. You know, option A, we could buy their property nice and quick and and very vanilla kind of a purchase, or if they don't want to go in that direction, we can then help them list their property and you know get the maximum uh, retail price for it. So that model where we're empowering the consumer is really the key to to everything we do right now, and it's why we're you know literally exploding all over the United States right now. That's terrific. I've actually um, done that, and I have a advertising agency, and and I think the customized approach to uh, customers is it's very well received. Well, there's there's absolutely no question about it. You know, there's no question about it. You know, one way to compete in the marketplace is you try to be the better than anyone else. But, you know, that's a tough way to compete. There's a lot of people doing a lot of different things out there. So, you know, the ultimate way to compete is, like you said, customization, you know, differentiate yourself from from the marketplace, from your competition. And, and that way, you know, you, you set yourself up into a playing field where no one else exists and customization in the real estate right now. That's a big thing. That's what separates us from everyone else out there. Love it. So, Peter, how many employees do you have? Uh, I've got about 22 employees here out of our Atlanta offices. And then, you know, we have local people uh, in, a, in the locations we're in. So I'd say probably collectively when you put the Atlanta where I'm headquartered out of in, in the, the satellite offices, uh, somewhere in the low 40s. Oh, wow. And how long have you been in real estate business? Uh, about 15 plus years. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Are you doing this full time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't do something like I do on a part time basis. <laughs> no. no, this is full time. Awesome. So what got you into real estate? I know I was reading on your uh, on your website about uh, you, you had a trailer park and um, some other things that, that didn't work or vending. I think it was vending. And uh, so how did you end up in real estate? Well, I actually came out of the franchising industry. I had 15 franchises. We had started a company here in the merchant services industry some time ago, some time back, uh, out of a small office with a buddy of mine. And three years later, we had franchised it to three, 15 different states, and we were doing great. But at that point, it really became a corporate thing, whereas I'm more of an entrepreneur and became a corporate thing. I was no longer really even in charge of my own company. So that's when I sold out of that, uh, was talking to somebody over uh, – a beer one night they told me they pulled a book out called deals on wheels by Lonnie Scruggs and I read it I thought it was the most unbelievable thing I ever heard of it was about mobile homes never even heard about them back then and I went to see Lonnie a couple of weeks later across the United States spent a day or two with him came back bought my first mobile home and a couple of years later had the largest brokerage ship of mobile homes here in Georgia wow. and uh, yeah yeah, and then and then literally what happened overnight, the financing fell out of that industry. We weren't able to pick up financing for our buyers. You know, all the major players got out of it. So this was the next step. You know, real estate was kind of the, the traditional real estate was kind of the next step up from the mobile home industry. And uh, here we are, you know, 13, 14 years later. Wow, that's a great way to, to earn your earn your chops, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. So, um at your other offices around the country, uh, do you do you remotely uh, uh, manage all of those, or how did how do you handle that? Yeah, we centralize the, the big piece, which is marketing. Real estate is all about marketing, so we centralize that out of our Atlanta operation. Um, 
And, you know, so like, for instance, into our Jacksonville office, we'll do all the marketing into Jacksonville right from Atlanta. We generate calls of sellers of properties. Uh, they they take in they come in inbound uh, right into Atlanta. And so we, we centralize that. And then for the boots on the ground, which you have to have in the real estate, we keep that at the local level. OK, so you have a call center in mm-hmm. Atlanta? basically. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. OK. Well, as you know, this is a marketing podcast, so let's chat a little bit about the marketing side of your business. Uh, sure. When you first started, uh, did you have a marketing plan? I don't know if I had a marketing plan, but real estate is all about marketing. And yeah. uh, so I, I knew I had to engage in marketing. Uh, you know, in the beginning, when you don't have a ton of money, you know, you're trying to figure out ways of doing it that are free. And then ultimately, you know, you get into the paid ways of marketing and, you know, which actually makes it more predictable and more consistent. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, in the beginning, that's all you're doing in real estate is marketing. You're looking for deals. You know, that's the name of the game in real estate. Yeah. Was the was the marketing different between when you were doing the trailers versus doing the traditional homes? Well, the, the marketing that... Uh, that I used was different. You know, in the trailer world, it was very much, we did a lot of in the park marketing, meaning, I mean, back then we used to literally go into mobile home parks and knock on doors. Okay. Um, and just ask people, you know, are they open to selling their properties? Would they be open or do they know anyone else looking to sell their properties? I mean, that one line, are you open to selling or do you know anyone else open to selling? I mean, it, it, that, that, that line made me more money than so many other things in real estate as it relates to marketing. That's a great way uh, to ask it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you're, you're talking directly to the owners, which, you know, in any kind of marketing, you want to go directly to the source. Yeah. Uh, whereas when we got into real estate, um, although you could knock on doors, in real estate, and we're not above doing that. We did some of that in the beginning. Ultimately, we hired people to do that. Uh, in, in the real estate, we went a little bit more the traditional route, um, like direct mail, web-based marketing, and stuff like that. Actually, the only thing we did, not I think about in mobile homes, is we did advertising, and we're the largest classified buyer here in Georgia for one of those penny thrift, thrifty nickels, oh, one of those yeah. penny papers. Yeah. We used to not think about it. We ran about 100 ads a week with them. Um, and, uh, for buyers and for sellers. And then we just did hand to hand, not hand to hand, but door knocking. When we got into real estate again, it became more of a traditional, you know, web based, digital, direct mail, uh, phone calls and, and, and things like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the target market changed as well. There's no question. There's yeah. no question. And seeing real estate, it's a lot easier than it was in mobile homes to go do specific kind of marketing to the target because in real estate there's an actual tax record created of all, of ownership so you could you know you could pull off those tax records and find out who the owners are and go directly to them mobile homes are treated like cars where you just get a title right so there's really no one no way of knowing who owns what there's no registration there's no official thing so there you kind of go more of a guerrilla marketing you just kind of try to hit it all interesting but it was probably a good experience to have that first yeah, yeah, no, the mobile homes was definitely where uh, where I learned a lot about this business. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, no question about it. So what was your first marketing win, and did you do it on purpose, or did it just happen? Uh, gosh, I think my major made a couple of things. You know, the, 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 the uh, one when I realized how to work with bird dogs uh, in, in real estate, and bird dogs are basically... Uh, individuals that you task to go out there and find deals for you. That was a big aha moment for me that there's somebody will be willing to actually go out there and not ex- get, expect to get paid unless they find something. So they, in essence, you know, worked off commissions on the back end. Um, and I became a huge, huge uh, bird dog person. In the end, you know, we actually set up a whole business model around training bird dogs and working with bird dogs and 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 teaching them and supporting them. And then That's I guess, awesome. yeah, and then I guess my next one came with what we're so heavily involved in right now is direct mail. You know, I've been hearing, I was hearing about direct mail for years before I started partaking in it. And um, I, to this day, I will tell you, there's there's nothing out there in real estate that, that touches direct mail. Absolutely nothing. Wow. Do you use direct mail for both sides, sellers and, and buyers? Just the sellers. Just for the sellers. sellers. Yep. 
Yep, just the seller side. The buyers, we actually have an in-house sales team that, that goes out there and finds buyers and things like that. Cool. Amber made a funny face when you said bird dogs. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, in a way, it's uh, uh, almost like a virtual assistant, I guess we could compare it to nowadays, huh? Somebody to, to does the work for you. Yep, absolutely. Uh, except yeah. in, in your case, it wasn't on the hourly. It was uh, based on them actually getting a lead for you. Absolutely. Yep, okay. absolutely. Well, not even just a lead, the whole deal. Oh, um, really? Yeah, okay. absolutely. That's right. They, they go out there and they secure deals. You know, they, they go talk to... Um, you know, sellers and negotiate. They negotiate contracts. I mean, they get all the way to the closing. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, very interesting. So, what kind of marketing efforts are working for you right now? You've already mentioned direct mail. Well, direct mail is how we get about ninety-five percent of our of our deals. You know, still work with bird dogs. Uh, we do web-based marketing. You know, where we're driving leads to to lead pages. Um, we, we do a lot, well, we do, you know, I'm sorry, it's not, not probably about 70%. We do a tremendous amount of outbound calls, you know, where we're basically just calling for people that own real estate. And, uh, we generate, we do voicemail drops into their cell phones or to their regular phones and to generate, you know, calls, uh, on the back end that way. Okay. Are you doing texting as well? Um, no, no, we're not. I think the reason we decided not to is just because I think the laws are a little bit stricter on the texting. Someone said me have said before. I can't remember why we didn't go in that direction, but 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 you know we're very very uh, we're very um, um, you know we're very focused on the on the on the direct mail and outbound calls. Right. Right. You know, and we do outbound calls to generate inbound calls. So we have basically predictive dialers that go on the on the outbound side, and then we. Um, take inbound calls in a live environment through our call center. Very nice. It sounds like you got a good system going. Yeah, yeah. We we have a machine. I mean, people, when they come in our offices and they come in from all over the United States looking and watching what we do, they're they're impressed. Yeah. You that's know. funny you say machine. I, I had a conversation with a business owner yesterday, and that's what they're trying to build is kind of this, you know, uh, from start to finish, you know, all the different touches, all the different, pieces and and it's quite a process oh, there's no question there's no question i mean it's a, it's got to be it's got to be a process you have to be systematized in order for it to function efficiently yeah yeah a uh, little question off of uh off of normal what are you guys using a specific crm for uh once you get the leads well right now we're using pipe drive which is just basically a sales driven um which is basically a sales driven uh crm well, okay. it, we're in a process of switching over to Commissions Inc., which is a very uh, industry-specific CRM that um, that we have uh, probably um, hopefully be doing here in the next two weeks. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that's real important too. That you know all the systems and then having that CRM in place. Well, yeah. I mean, because obviously, you know, most sales or a lot of sales aren't done on the front end. Yeah. You know, they're done on the back end as a result of follow-ups. And things like that. So, without a, a robust CRM system, you, you're, you know, in my right now, 50% of all the deals we're doing are as a result of contacts that I've made, you know, days, weeks, months, sometimes years ago. So, yeah, absolutely critical. So, are you doing any marketing online then? Yeah, we generate some leads online. You know, in real estate, and, and you know, I also have a, a coaching program, and, and, and on that side of the world. 95% of my leads are generated online. But interesting, in my investing world, almost none of my leads are generated online. And it really comes down to costs. Mm -hmm. The costs of direct mail versus web-based marketing. And, and on the investing side, it's not even close. The direct mail is not only the most effective and efficient way of doing it, but it also is the most cost-effective way of doing it. That's interesting. What Do you know what kind of conversion rate you get from the direct mail? Well, we have astronomical um, response rate. You know, we we some of our materials gets as many as ten to twenty percent response rate. That's terrific. Yeah, yeah, that's about as good as it gets, I think, in any industry. 
And, you know, and then we obviously, you know, have a pretty good system for following up and things like that. I'm not sure exactly what it is from the time something gets sent out, what our conversion is to the purchases we make or the retail listings we list. But we, we, we have very high numbers, you know, because our, our marketing philosophy is very simple. We're not looking for quality. We're looking for quantity because we know if we'll get quantity in that, we'll get quality. Right. But we'll also get those ones that would never have called before because they might not be the perfect place at the perfect time. Whereas we know if we can capture the whole market into our funnels, sooner or later they're going to move. They're going to make some kind of a move, and um, and we'll be the beneficiaries of it. Very good. On on your uh, non invest investing side, you said you get quite a bit of leads through the web. Are those uh, because they just find your website through search engine optimization, or you run yeah, Facebook yeah, do, ads, or yeah, we do some PPC. Okay. Um, again, not huge into it, just because of the the the, the prohibitive, the cost prohibitiveness of it, and the right. cheap of of the direct mail. But you know, I will tell you, you know, we're talking about what our philosophies in marketing. You know, we're more of a quantity, not quality leads. Whereas when you go to the web, you know, it's that you're going to get the best quality there. You're not going to get a lot of quantity, but you are going to get the best quality. Right. But but again, since I'm a volume guy, um, you know, for us, quantity is very, very important. Very important. It makes sense. Um, what marketing trends or tactics do you see other businesses are doing that you wish you could take advantage of? Gosh, like I said, we pretty much do it all as it relates to real estate investing. There, there's not many things... Um, uh, there's not many things that people are doing in real estate on the marketing side that we do not partake in just because of our sheer size and, you know, effectiveness in, 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 in the marketplace. Um, but I guess if I had to choose, I would say, you know, it's going back where we started from, We're utilizing other people, you know, the bird dogs, as they're called in the real estate business. We kind of really got out of that side of the model. We really got out of that side of the business. And uh, because we got out of that uh, the bird dogs is the most cost effective because there's zero cost associated with it. Right. You know, you're only paying commission on the back end if something actually closes. And uh, and I used to run my whole company off of that. Literally, I mean, we used to get 95 percent, if not more, of our deals uh, off that side of the model. But then we just kind of got out of it and never really picked it up to a high level. And and I know there's a lot of investors out there that they live off of that. So. You know, if you had to say something, uh, if I had to say something, I'd say I, I wish, and I think we will incorporate our bird dogs back into into the thing. Hey, you guys know what we do here. We do a ton of deals, and and I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program where I coach people just like you to help become very, very successful real estate investors. So if you're a buyer or you know other buyers literally all over the world that are looking for deals in a Georgia market, specifically concentrated towards Atlanta, you need to be on our buyers list. By now, you'll see my email scrolling across the screen. Send me an email. Just say, add me to the buyer's list. And on a daily basis, you're going to get some terrific, both ROI and equity-driven deals uh, emailed right directly to you through email. The other thing, if you're looking to become a successful investor, whether you're brand new, just getting started, or whether you're doing it already and you're looking to be a, a bigger, more sophisticated, more savvy investor, I know I could help you do that. Send me an email to learn more about my one-on-one -on -one coaching program, or better yet, right below this video, there's a link right directly to coachingbypeter.com. You can go straight there and learn more about how I could help you become very successful in this industry.